Hi, Sandy here, and today we're testing the limits of our Arsh watercolor paper by using a set of paints that, while they're really vibrant and fun, aren't really the best watercolor brand out there. I mean, it's one thing when we're using the best possible watercolor paint. I mean, of course the results are going to be off the charts, right? But let's see how our awesome 100% cotton watercolor paper behaves with mm, less than awesome paints, shall we? <laughs> There's this video I made not long ago where I tested this paper more in depth and I'm going to add a link to the description so you can check it out if you want, okay? As you can see, it doesn't have a very toothy texture, not like Bao Hong Master's Choice or anything like that, which I personally prefer. Now guys, I'm in a very chill mood today and my throat's kind of hurting, so it's going to be a different kind of video, okay? Fully expect some ASMR experience today for this video, okay? <laughs> now let's tape our paper down, shall we? Next step is getting our Mungyo watercolor set, all 48 colors, and spray them with a lot of water. Now these are quite thirsty watercolors, so we need quite a good amount of water to activate them. And I've also tested and swatched this set, I think it was in the summer when I first got them, so I'll also be leaving a link in the description for that video so you can watch it after we're done. Okay, so our project today is simple. We're doing Christmas ornaments. Well, balls to be more precise. But we'll be using this cup right here to help us with our round shape, but also with our paint distribution. Let me show you what I mean. So we pick our first color and get our paintbrush nice and wet with the activated paint. And I've chosen this blue to start with. And as you can see, this paint does have quite a creamy consistency and it's quite saturated with pigment too, which is a very good thing. In fact, Mangyu does market itself as a professional watercolor brand, but on further inspection you can easily see it isn't really comparable to really high-end professional paints like Schmincke or Winsor & Newton. And I'm mentioning these two because they're the ones I tried so far. <laughs> I'm sure there are many other professional watercolor brands out there, of course. Then we just turn it onto our paper without hesitations, okay? We want one circle and one circle only. So be firm about it, where it lands is where it will stay. And now, with a brush of your choice, and I prefer this large one right here, we'll just pull paint from the circle we've just made and spread it to the inside of our ball. Now, we don't want to cover the whole thing. We do want some white space in the middle, so keep that in mind. Now, this is just a first layer, so don't worry about the value or the details. We'll get to that later. Now, while it's still wet, and this paper is very good at keeping your paint wet for longer, let's rinse out the brush and move on to our second color. <laughs> and in case it's not noticeable, I just love the way paint spreads in the water. <laughs> Those blooms. <laughs> A lot of people don't really like it, but it's one of my favorite things about painting with watercolor. And I have to say, these watercolors are behaving really, really well. I guess it's undeniable, guys. The paper you use really does make a difference. I don't remember which paper I used exactly when I tested these, but I'm pretty sure it was 100% cotton, and still I'm noticing such a difference in the control I'm having over these paints. And that's it for now, for this first ball. So let's do it all over again for our second one. And as you can see, I'm not even cleaning the rim. It still has some blue paint on it. And now I'm just adding red. So I fully expect some kind of purple to show up. Let's see. And again, we just pull the paint from the circle we've just stamped onto our paper and you can see that that's exactly what it is because this color is made by the blue and the red together. So the only places you will find this exact color are the paper and the rim of our glass. And such a pretty purple too. <laughs> Ok, 
Okay, next step is adding some vibrant pink, and this is probably my favorite color combination, purple and pink. <laughs> it kind of has been since I was little, if you forget my teenager black and dark blue period. <laughs> Make no mistake guys, if we were using cellulose paper, the results would be very different. You know, even 100% cotton paper that isn't as good quality as this would give us a totally different outcome. For starters, I'm yet to experience water pooling with this paper. It just absorbs water like a dream. And for me, that's a major help because I always do tend to use too much water when I paint. Also, you definitely see some harsher lines where the paint meets or any really, which we don't hear. With this paper, you don't see a Thing. They just blend and settle, which is exactly what I want. Okay guys, time for our third and last ornament and we are going really bright for this one. <laughs> Let's do a vibrant orange. Ah, uh, whoops, I've gone a bit over the line, but that's okay, I don't mind it. But if that happens to you, just get a clean brush, soak it with lots of water, and then brush over that bit of paint you want to remove. Then just dab it with the paper towel and repeat as many times as necessary to get it all out. But keep in mind that some colors do stain more than others, and you may not be able to remove it completely. For example, I don't think I would be able to remove this orange 100%, but I'm not worried. For what I have planned, I know this will be pretty unnoticeable. And now I am adding some bright red. Ugh, oh, I love how these are looking. How about you? <laughs> Do you like this? Let's dry them real quick before we move on to the details. Okay guys, now I've gotten some golden paint from the same set to make that bit on the top of the Christmas ornament. You know, the ones you hang them from. I actually googled it and it turns out it's called a hanger cap. <laughs> Do you confirm? <laughs> so let's just go ahead and paint those, still making sure to leave some white space on them, okay? Just to give that lighter feel. Moving on, I am getting my very thin brush to draw some details, starting by reinforcing that round shape for our ornaments. Now, I know we're doing it all in real time today, guys, and that's not something I usually do, but I have to say I'm really enjoying just being here, painting something really beautiful and really easy with you guys. I know that we're always in a rush nowadays. So much to do, so many things drawing our attention, and maybe that's what will happen. Maybe you'll get bored and move on to something else. But if by any chance this is your time out, your you time, that break in the middle of a busy day that's for you to take a breather and do something you enjoy, and if you've chosen this video for that, well, first of all, thank you. <laughs> and second, yeah, just enjoy the quiet, you know, the calmness of it all. Enjoy each stroke and each line and how all the pieces just come together to create something beautiful. Also, we're almost done because now we're just adding a few details to our ornaments to make them a little bit more unique. <laughs> and I just love how the paint in my brush is getting mixed in with that golden yellow and that orange from the outline and we'll pull color from all that and all of a sudden those strips aren't green anymore but something completely different. And now we just keep going with the other two. Okay guys, so this is what we've got, but we're not done yet. Now we need to decorate the top of our Christmas ornament and of course hang them. <laughs> so let's start with some festive Christmas greenery, shall we? Nothing too perfect or straight, you really just want to let go and see where your brush takes you. There's no way it's going to look bad. The messier, the better. Here we go. 
And as you can see, I'm mixing all the bright greens I have on this palette and the gold yellow is also getting mixed in, which looks absolutely gorgeous. Okay, now that our greenery is nice and dry, we're just going to add some red berries to our mix. Because, you know, Christmas just needs some red berries. <laughs> Almost there guys, after our berries are painted and dry, it's time for the final touches. And for me, that's whipping out my pen and finishing it off with some loose lines. Okay guys, I know I said this was the final touch, but I just can't help myself. Christmas paintings need splatters. They just do. <laughs> some colorful splatter, some colorful splatter, oh, tank tired. Oh. Some colorful splattering all over just to finish off with a bang. Plus, it is just so much fun to do. <laughs> yes, it's messy. Yes, you get paint all over yourself and on your table and anything sitting on it, but it's worth it. Plus, you know, watercolors are pretty easy to clean, so let's do it. And now a little bit more ASMR for you. And we're done. <laughs> this is what we've created together and I absolutely love it. I hope you do too. And I have to say I'm absolutely blown away by how this Mungio watercolor behaves with this paper. Professional watercolors indeed. <laughs> Easy to control, very vibrant, even after dried. I didn't really test the transparency, but the blending was perfect. I am so happy. This paper rocks. Thank you for doing this with me, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I had a blast. Have a great week, and I will see you really, really soon. Bye-bye.